Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a Uriel Ventris from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to the Army Painter who has sent me out the paints to use in this tutorial. We'll be using a mixture of regular acrylic the Army Painter paints and also their new speed paints which I think are absolutely fantastic. We won't be painting Uriel Ventris over a white prime miniature which most people do with speed paints. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever and you can still get great results but I find the techniques that I employ in this video work exceptionally well with the Army Painter speed paints. But anyway, uh, I think you'll be the judge of that yourselves guys. Also, Uriel Ventris will be given away with a brand new battle force of Primaris Space Marines, courtesy of the Army Painter. Stay tuned to my next video that I'll upload within the next week where we'll be giving away that box set and the painted Uriel Ventris. Okay guys, uh, this is going to be a rather long video as always, so please get comfortable. Maybe have a nice hot drink, my personal favourite, a cup of coffee and we'll get started with the tutorial. Here you can see that I've primed the miniature using my airbrush. I didn't actually airbrush prime the miniature on camera as I thought it's not really needed. We all know what it's like to prime a miniature. But I actually use the Army Painters Matte Black Perfect Coverage Air Primer. And as you can see, it really is matte. The matter the finish of the miniature, the better the next lot of uh, things that we're going to do, like dry brushing on the miniature, or will work. So I really like that primer. Here you can see I'm using a Vortec mixer with Army Painters regular acrylics. The fantastic paints, but sometimes people actually complain that the paints separate, which I can understand. But if you actually thoroughly mix them by shaking them up or doing it the lazy method like me using a Vortec mixer they actually work really really well. Here you can see that I'm dry brushing the uh, Uriel Ventris with the paint that I just showed you a moment ago and as you can see I've removed almost all of the paint from the bristles of the brush and we're just lightly going over the miniature just catching all of those raised areas. The reason that we're doing this is because the way that the speed paints work, they actually create a natural shading, a mid-tone and a highlight. But if we actually do the dry brushing first, it actually accentuates all of those features of the speed paints even more. It's important to note guys that I'm not actually scrubbing at the miniature, I'm lightly uh, brushing backwards and forwards. It may look more violent on the camera than it is actually, uh, but it's really important that you don't have too much paint on the brush and you're fairly light with the brush strokes with the dry brushes. Here we can see what the miniature is going to look like once the first round of dry brushing has been completed. We'll actually give it another coating uh, with a much lighter paint in a moment so we actually get more of a depth on the miniature.
Now we're using Spaceship Exterior, which is a much lighter paint. It's almost white in color, but it's actually a light gray. And again, we're just going to be dry brushing it. This time we're going to be a little bit more gentle with the dry brushing, and we're actually gonna accentuate certain areas of the miniature more than others. So anywhere you see an area that you want an extreme highlight or where you want an area to pop after we apply the speed paints, that's where you want to hit the miniature with the um, exterior spaceship grey. Here you can see what the miniature looks like after all of the dry brushing has been completed. As you can see, we still have lots of depth to the miniature, but there'll be natural areas of highlight that the speed paints pick up. Here you can see I have the speed paint magic blue. This is going to be our ultramarine blue color if you like. I'm applying the magic blue to a spare base that I flipped upside down. I'm actually going to place a few drops of the Army Painter Speed Paint Mixing Medium. And the reason I'm adding this is just so I've got a little bit more control over the speed paint so I can make sure that those highlights that have been applied with the dry brushing stage are going to pop out and look really nice. It's important to note that there is a, a technique, I think it's called slap chop or something like that, where you literally just load your brush up and slap the uh, speed paint onto the miniature, which again, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I've seen some great results uh, by people doing that. But as you can see, I'm not applying it in heavy amounts here. I'm actually applying it quite thin. And the reason for that is, again, we want to make the use of all of that great dry brushing that we've achieved uh, so I'm applying the paint relatively thinly and then I can control where those highlights and shadows are going to show up on the miniature It's important to know that I'm being very careful that I don't get any of the blue on any of the areas where we don't want to be to be painted in that blue color. So like the very edges of the shoulder pauldrons which will be green, the cape again which will be green or any other areas that we don't want to be blue. So take your time, don't rush. Uh, roll the bristles of the brush on the palm of your hand or on some uh, paper towel or on your hobby bench or anywhere you can roll those bristles into a nice fine point which will help you have more control over your brush you can see here that we're building up that magic blue speed paint color really nicely and you can actually see those highlights popping already 
the way that the speed paint works are absolutely fantastic I really really do like them And here you can see the finished speed paint magic blue part of the miniature and it's starting to look good already guys really happy with that magic blue finish on Uriel Ventris Now we're going to paint the green areas of the miniature using that orc skin speed paint. Again, trying to control the amount of speed paint that I'm applying to the brush and the miniature, not applying too much in any one area and just making sure the paint doesn't pull too much. Now we're going to use hardened leather on all of the leather areas of Uriel Ventris. 
again notice how that dry brush work that we've already completed works in unison with the speed paint to really give a sense of highlight and shadow on the miniature if you didn't look that carefully at the miniature you would swear that there's actually hard edge highlights on the miniature where the speed paint has picked up the dry brush in Now we're going to use the army paint as weapon bronze to actually start painting all of the uh, gold metallics. Don't be fooled by the name weapon bronze as this is a really almost deep goldy colour and we can use it as the base layer to actually build up to a lighter gold later on in the tutorial. Here, if you look at the brush, I've only placed a tiny amount towards the tip of the brush. This enables me to have more control on the amount of paint flow on the miniature. Also, this is a good habit to have. Not that I'm an expert on it, guys, because I've ruined so many brushes in my time. But uh, if you don't load your bristles up too much with paint, generally your paintbrush will last longer. Now we're going to use bright gold to highlight all of the weapon bronze. I might have missed out a step here guys where I actually washed all of the gold with hardened leather. Now I'm coming in with the bright gold and I'm just ever so lightly touching the extreme top surfaces of all of the gold areas of the miniature with that bright gold and it's going to give it a really nice highlight. Now we're going to use shining silver rather on Uriel Ventris 
painting all of the areas that we want to be metallic silver so like the blade and the bolt gun and again we're just dry brushing the metallics to try and leave some of the shading behind and this is going to leave a really nice finish on the sword blade We're using Spaceship Exterior again, the really light grey colour that's almost white. And a top tip here guys is, whenever you want to paint white, don't actually use white, use an off-white colour. You'll generally find that it's easier to paint with, it will give you smoother results than a pure white colour. But it will still look almost white to the naked eye. There's a few areas on the miniature that I want to hit with red and that's the lenses of the helmet 
Uh, but first of all, what I do is I don't think I get this on camera, unfortunately, guys. When I actually paint the lenses of the eyes with that exterior uh, spaceship color, and then I hit it with the blood red speed paint, and that's what I'm doing here as well. I'm uh, painting the tassels on the back of the backpack, and I'm also painting the uh, purity seals. Corpse Pale is going to be painted on all of the purity seal parchment area, and as you can see, um, it goes on really, really well. One coat coverage, pretty much. And after that, we're going to hit it up with a speed paint to wash over it, and that will give us a really nice ancient parchment look. Here we're using Pallid Bone and the reason we're using Pallid Bone is this is a really nice almost sepia type tone and this is going to make that parchment on the purity seals look really old and ancient. And here we have our finished Uriel Ventris. There is one area of the miniature I forgot to actually paint guys and I think it's his frag or crack grenade. I can't remember which one it is, but it's basically on his waist and you'll notice that it's void of color. So uh, yeah, forgive me for that little lapse there guys. Lastly, I want to say a huge thank you once again to the Army Painter who supplied me with the paints for this tutorial and also the uh, Space Marine Battle Force that I will be giving away in about a week's time with Uriel Ventris that we painted up in this video. Um, I really hope you like this video guys, uh, it's been a long time coming so huge apology for the lack of tutorials on my channel over the last, what, two years has it been? don't know uh, but yeah I hope this video is a little ways to making up for the lack of content on my channel so uh, lastly guys this is a long video guys so if you made it to the end of this video huge thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and I'll catch you in the next one